Hello everyone, my name is Tamarin Payne and I'm here to answer your question, what is Ecstatic Dance? So in a minute we're going to be talking with Ecstatic Dance UK's founder, Renee Lacroix, and she's going to go into some detail about the different aspects of Ecstatic Dance and things that you can expect. But first off, what is it? Well, it's this really fun event that you can go to which is completely sober and you just get to have a really good dance. But there's so many other aspects to it that I love. Um, I love meeting new people, I love the different types of music that I get to listen to that I've never heard before, and the community that you end up being a part of. Um, it's a very sociable thing, and I've met some lovely people doing ecstatic dance. Um, I, do, I am a bit of a dancer, I'm no pro, but I do love dancing, and um, it's a really lovely, safe-held space for that. Um, and maybe we should just get to it and talk to Renee so you can find out why. So, uh, Renee, thank you so much for joining us and to have this chat about what ecstatic dance is. Um, so I guess my first question to you is why do you host ecstatic dance? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, I would say that first it's because it's a passion. So before I started uh, doing this for a living, I used to be an ecstatic dancer. Well, I say I still am. But um, yeah, it was, it was on the dance floor that I had first a vision of, of thinking, wow, I really want to do this for a living. And because uh, I think it's, it's a very powerful practice. And for me, it really ticks all the boxes. So it's not just a practice, it's also a meditation. Uh, it's, it's also a workout. Uh, it's, it can be a party um, and it can be a therapy as well. So it's really good for both mental and physical health. And uh, yeah, I think it just, um, well, it makes me a better person. And I believe it can improve uh, everyone's well-being. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, so what, what is the setup when you host an ecstatic dance? Um, what, what does it look like and what do people have to do? Are there any rules? Yes. Well, rules, we call them guidelines. Yeah, that's nice. Eh? So, um, well, first I'll talk about the setup. So of course, when you come into the room, uh, it's normally, uh, uh, well, like I'll talk about the way we, we host them at Ecstatic Dance UK. Um, but normally you come into the big, a big hall, empty, and it's ideally wooden floor uh, because we're barefoot. And on one end, we have the DJ booth and all the equipment. And then on the other end, we have the altar and we have like a water station so people can rehydrate. So when you come in, uh, we ask. Uh, people to stay silent. So that's the first and the most typical guideline of ecstatic dance is no talking. So we tell them that they can communicate with their bodies, but just no spoken words. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second guideline is barefoot. So this is, uh, well, there's two, two different reasons. So the first is, so you have a direct connection with the ground. So it's easier to ground when you have the skin directly on the, on the, on the ground. And the second is for safety. So because at ecstatic dance, it can get a bit crazy and people jumping all over and if if you have shoes so we, we just ask everyone to be barefoot so there's less risk of injury and cool. then um another guideline is mindfulness so no intoxicants so we basically ask people not to drink or take drugs before coming to the session which for us is a bit um, obvious on a sunday morning but a lot of ecstatic dances happen in the evening as well so we have to be Quite mindful about that and uh, a new rule that wasn't there maybe 10 years ago is no mobiles so we ask people to turn their phones off or um, airplane mode and no pictures or filming this is just really to make people feel safe so knowing that they will be photographed and it should on social media yeah lovely yeah great okay so that's about kind of the guidance yep which we all need and it's it's so important it really helps us to have a really safe space I think and express ourselves like I don't want to be doing ecstatic dance and someone's on their phone filming me you know and it's really nice to feel held in that way yeah that's great so obviously part of what you do is that you DJ and you have um, incredible music that helps us on this journey that we go on with ecstatic dance and it really is a journey um, so how do you choose your music Yes, 
That's, the, that's a very good question. So in Ecstatic Dance, we normally follow a wave format. So it starts very slow and meditative, and then gradually we build the energy up in tempo and energy, and then we have a peak, uh, which is what we call it Ecstatic Dance. So the idea is that after a lot of, um, a lot of build up, you kind of hit a peak and then we go down again. And then personally, I like to do in a, in a in an hour and a half, I like to do two peaks. So I will go up and down and have breather, then go up again and then down. And then we finish normally as well um, in stillness, just like what we start. So in, the idea is that it's like a life cycle. So it starts and finishes um, both in stillness. I can be lying on the ground in a meditative state. state. And we also normally also have um, a 10 minute um, sound bath at the end as well. Mm, one of my favorite bits, <laughs> bathing in those gongs and whatever else is going on, it's gorgeous. Yeah, you don't really get that at a club as well. That's something that's very unique. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Um, so what sort of music in general then can we expect at, at Ecstatic Dance? You know, do we have stuff that has lyrics in or is it all kind of just music? What's What do we get? So there's no there's no kind of hard fast rules for ecstatic dance music. Uh, as DJs, we like to say that anything goes. Of course, there's a few things that we don't really allow. For example, explicit lyrics or lyrics that are da degrading to um, either to a certain gender or to a certain race. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't say that at all. It has to be wholesome in a way. But mm -hmm. in terms of genre, I, I would say anything goes. Uh, we mostly have world electronica and global bass but you can say pretty much anything from dance or house trance or even some hip-hop and my personal favorite is neoclassical so I always um, put in some um, some neoclassical in my sets lovely that's kind of good to know i mean i've been to so many and there is such a wonderful variety um and i think part of an ecstatic dance and our journey with that as dancers is just finding the ones that are right for you, finding the DJs that you love and finding, you know, you try loads of different venues and the venues as well is something I wanted to talk about actually, because the music is obviously such an intrinsic part of the movement, but the venues can be so special as well. Um, I went to a church in, is it Vauxhall? It's quite a mm -hmm. big venue. Yeah, and now I've been going to, before lockdown, obviously, I was going to the, is it the Cypriot Church in Baker Street? And the place okay, is... I haven't been to that one. Yeah, I, can, I think it's kind of the new venue because the Vauxhall Church um, had, to, had to stop. But the, the venues make such a big difference as well because they can be so beautiful, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that for everyone. It, it, you can be dancing in the most stunning places. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. Um, cool. So we're in lockdown at the moment. I mean, it's kind of semi lockdown, um, but what's going on with ecstatic dance at the moment? What's going on with it now? And also what's going to go on with it in the future? Do you know what's going to happen? Well, the future is hard to predict. <laughs> When we when we entered lockdown, we all thought it would be a month or so, then we would be back out. And of course, it's been much longer than expected. So most ecstatic dance communities went online mm -hmm. uh, in March. So for us, we hosted our first online session on the 22nd of March, and then we did 13 sessions. Okay. Um, every Sunday, we continued meeting online. And um, and then people got a bit tired, I think, especially if you work from home and if you work on a computer, Monday to Friday, you only work once on your weekends or your free mm. time on a screen. And then now people are allowed out, they're allowed to meet um, outside in small groups. So what we did is we transitioned. So now we're doing silent disco style dances Ooh. in the park. So we found this beautiful park right behind the old bath, which is our venue in, in Hackneywick. And now we're dancing every Sunday morning, socially distanced and with a headset. So we still, we keep the same format, but now we're outdoors uh, under the sun with the wind. And it's, mm. beautiful. it's actually, I would say it's even maybe even better than being indoors. And yeah, it will be hard to go to wanting to go back inside after that. 
Yeah, well, you know, the benefit of the old baths in Hackney is that, you know, you can open the doors and you can go out onto that courtyard as well and you can get a bit yeah. of sunshine and be in the wind and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I have to say, guys, while lockdown is still happening, it's it's well worth trying these silent disco formats because I actually did it years before lockdown um, on Hampstead Heath and we had the headsets and it was for full moon. So I think that's why we were outside. But yeah dancing outside on the grass feeling you know your feet on the grass it's it's pretty lovely so yeah dancing in nature is we also did a couple of sessions in epping forests and mm -hmm. there's something really magical about being in nature being surrounded with trees and just connecting with and the silence of, of the field not having much traffic and yeah i really recommend mm -hmm. getting out in nature and dancing yeah, lovely. Oh, well, Renee, thank you so much for chatting with us. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Um, you did mention before I hit record about the three pillars of ecstatic dance, and I'm kind of curious to know what those are. <laughs> so in ecstatic dance, there are three pillars, three different roles that you can take. So it's um, the DJing, there's the ceremony leader, and the, there's the event organizer. Now, in smaller communities, the same person can do all of that. It's a lot of work, but it can. But in, small, in, in bigger uh, communities and in venues, it will also often be split. So mm -hmm. the, the role of the event organizer is to manage the venue, the team, um, has, to, has to do with everything with logistics and admin, right. promotion. And then the ceremony leader is the one who holds space. So they're the one who even though ecstatic dance is unfacilitated, um, the ceremony leader does a little opening circle, a bit of grounding, some warming up exercises, and then we have the ecstatic dance set, which is completely unfacilitated, hmm. and then they finish with a closing circle, and they really hold space for the group for the duration of the, of the event. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the DJ who's playing all the music and but it's more, a, an ecstatic dance DJ is more than a DJ. It's, it's a guide. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I craft my set, it's always, you have to choose music that will inspire you or will trigger some kind of emotions. So I mm -hmm. think it's very, very important to see your role as, yeah, as being, you're not just playing music, you're bringing people on a journey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, you'll have to find out for yourself, guys. But yes, it definitely is a journey. Um, and the music is is can just be so magical. So yeah, thank you so much for clearing that up. Now I know what the three pillars are. <laughs> I'm like an expert. Um, well, I think that's everything for now, Renee. But um, hopefully I'm going to see you soon at one of your events. Um, when are they on? Are they on Sundays? So it's, yeah, so we've always done Sunday mornings. It's 10 to 1. Lovely. And then we finish with an optional lunch so for people if they want to hang afterwards and have a picnic in the park yeah, and we build that community together that's great all right well thank you so much for talking to us and i'll see you soon okay thank bye you. guys something i forgot to mention that might be good to put in your in your intro is the the community aspect yeah um because i think something i didn't really mention is that ecstatic dance is also so it's, it's, it's a therapy. So mm. you, you can go there to work on something. You can make an intention at the beginning and then work on it during the dance. But it's, there's also the community, the social aspect of going to ecstatic dance. And then you can really meet um, some like-minded people. And we always have so many people who start um, developing friendships and sometimes mm -hmm. having relationships out of people that they oh yeah i'm definitely going to mention that just because that's kind of you know i was desperate for meeting new people at the time because i was having a, a break from drinking so actually for me it was like oh i need to meet new people and then i went to some things and then i kind of found ecstatic dance because of that so mm. it's um yeah that's been my personal journey with it so yeah i will mention yeah Hi everyone, so I hope that helps you to understand what ecstatic dance is all about now and maybe we've got you a little bit curious to try it. There's some great benefits to it. I mean, for me, I was going through um, a time of stopping drinking. So it was a way of me still going out, being sociable, kind of having that dance floor vibe without being in a bar. You know, if you want to let out some anger or any sort of big emotions that you might have been holding, especially in lockdown, what a great way to release. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the dance floor.